Hi, this is Arjen Roos and I want to show you a technique to make a little bit boring picture like the one you're seeing now a little bit more interesting by applying a technique that simulates a use of ND filter and the end result will be like this. If you use an ND filter you can uh, slow the shutter speed down to seconds, a number of seconds and uh, the water in the image will be softened out and the sky will be moving by the moving of the clouds. So let's start off by deleting what I've already done. So what I'm let, left with is the background layer. It's just an unretouched open image. And first let's make a copy of the background layer. And this copy I'm going to name it water. And I'm going to select the water, just using the quick selection tool. But you can use whatever tool you feel best with. And now selected the water, I'm going to click on Refine Edge. And put the radius somewhere around two and a half, three. And the output to a layer mask. And if I hit OK, I will have a water layer with only water on it. If I turn off the background, you can see it looks like this. Now, with the layer selected, so make sure those little squares are around the layer, not around the mask. It will look like this, but around the layer. Then go to Filter, Blur and select Gaussian Blur. Using a high value for this image around 100 will look soft enough to see. This is too low, still too much detail in the water. And if I go too high, it will be too much smoothened out. So around 100, a little bit lower maybe, will be fine for this image. But of course, it will be different on your own image. Press OK and the water is done for now. So next I'm going to duplicate the background layer again and I'm going to call it city. Again I'm going to select it with a quick selection. This will be a little bit more work than the water, but still, because of the high contrast between the clouds and the buildings, it won't be too hard. I apologize for the noise. I can hear my laptop running really hot. So we might hear fans. This part is a little bit tricky. Just the bridge to get the bridge selected. But it doesn't have to be an exact selection. A rough selection will be fine for this technique. Again, I'm going to do a refine to, for the uh, two reasons. I want to see which parts I missed. Usually I uh, click uh, refine edge and then click back on the selection again a few times to make sure I'm selected everything. I'm now drawing on pits I've missed. And so let's uh, Photoshop do its thing. Maybe here a little bit. I'm going to press OK and I'm still 
have uh, the quick selection selected so now I can look around a little bit at some parts to the selection Well, I'm going to do this a little bit fast. It doesn't matter much for this technique to do an exact selection, but it all depends on the source image. Okay, I'm making a mask again by clicking on the add layer mask right down there. And I forgot to select the water, so um, Let's select it. I'm holding Alt and clicking on the layer mask thumbnail. This will reveal the layer mask and everything that's white will be revealed and black will be concealed. Let's select the part of the water. Edit, fill. And fill it with white. Did I forget part? Yes. And it fill with white. Okay. We select everything. Click on the layer icon, and as you can see, the layer mask is now fine. Okay. I need one more layer. So I'm going to. Duplicate the background layer again, this time calling the layer sky. And I want an opposite of this selection, so I'm going to hold command or control and click on the layer mask of the city layer. This will reselect everything in the city layer, but of course, I don't want the city, I want the sky. So I'm going to go to the menu and select Select, Inverse. Now I have only the sky selected. Select the sky layer and press the Add Layer Mask button. So now I have only the sky on the layer. Well, above this sky layer, I want a blank new layer. So I'm creating a new layer and I'm going to do to, to call that sky movement. And to do that, I'm going to select filter, render, clouds. This will render clouds. And they're not looking that good, but I'm not going to leave them this way. Um, and if I show you the whole layer, it will look like this, with only the sky movement layer selected. I'm going to filter, blur. I'm going to do a radial blur. And this part is a little bit tricky. You have to do too well. So I'll play around a little bit with it. Uh, because I've done it already, I know the amount I'm looking for, it will be around 30. And the center of the blur, I want it always to be at the edge of the photo, because if we put it in the center, it will look like the wind is blowing the clouds two different directions. Well, probably not very realistic. So I'm always keeping it on the edge left or right edge, doesn't matter much. And I want to be well, a little bit below the center, but we can change that a little bit later on also. And the quality set to best, and the blur method set to zoom. Okay, this will take a while. And depending on uh, the power of your computer, it will be a couple of minutes. And since I'm recording this, 
I'm uh, seeing that this is going a little bit slower than it's uh, doing when I'm not recording this. The fence trying to cool my laptop. But hey, we're almost there. This will put the movement in the layer I created with the clouds. So I don't have to touch the original photo, the original sky. Well, let's see. This looks nice. I usually, when I'm here, I'm going to do a command or control T, free transform of this layer, the sky movement layer. You can always also go there by doing image, excuse me, and edit, free transform, will be the same thing. And I'm going to play around a little bit with the cloud movement I've created. Just make sure the center is just below the horizon. I think this will be it. You can also make it a little bit longer to have the, the horizontal movement a little bit bigger. Or can even rotate it a little bit. Of course you have to make it bigger to make this work. Well, I might just like it a little bit less like this. Okay. Press enter to commit the changes. And of course this doesn't look really realistic. So I'm going to change the blending mode of the sky movement layer from normal to overlay. And now you can see if I turn this on and off that it does make a difference and makes the sky move way more. But of course this will, would be reflected in the water, so I want a copy of the sky movement layer. And rename it to water movement. And move it all the way to the top because there was my water layer. Again free transform it to make it fit the water like so enter to commit and I want to make sure it's clipped to the water layer by right clicking on the water movement layer create clipping mask it will clip to the layer below it, which is the water layer, of course. So now it's only visible on the water layer. And I have the opacity set way too high, so I'm going to lower it really low, just a few percent. Well, maybe like this, 8%. Yeah, just a little bit of movement in the water, because the blurry made it a really nice mirror. It's just a bit too clean. Okay, well, I think this technique will look better in uh, black and white. So I'm going to change the image to black and white and add a little bit of contrast also. And I'm going to select the black and white adjustment layer. And I'm going to do that twice. Black and white. Oh, the bottom one I'm going to call contrast. And I'm going to put the blending mode of the bottom one from normal to soft light. And as you can see, if I turn it on and off, it gives it a little bit of more contrast. And the, the, the top one is, of course, just the layer to make it a black and white, because if I turn this off, there's still color left. And there you have it.
maybe tweak the contrast down a little bit. Yeah, that's nicer. Now, because of the sky movement layer being an overlay blending mode, that means that the tricky part, like for instance the bridge, is still completely visible. As you can see, if I zoom right in. Of course, and this uh, image needs some cleaning up. I see a moving bird here, and uh, maybe you have to tweak it a little bit more. But to show you the technique of uh, adding an ND filter uh, in Photoshop, I think this will be enough. So I hope you have learned something, and uh, show me your results if you try to uh, use this technique if you want. And uh, take care. Bye-bye.